Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm All Things Wrestling, and today I'm going to be reviewing WWE Monday Night Raw, 4th of May 2020. May the 4th be with you, even though you're most certainly not watching this on May the 4th. But it's. was. Star Wars Day! Yay, is the thing, for some reason. Uh, moving swiftly on to the review, we start with who's on commentary. We have Tom Phillips, Samojo, and Byron Saxton. I like Samojo on commentary. He's pretty good on it. No surprise, because Joe's a good talker. We then start with the VIP lounge. Um, we're going to have the three women that was in a not-a-match match last week. Asuka, Nia Jax, and Shayna Baszler. The last to come out is Nia Jax. There's two futons on a table. Uh, Asuka was on one. This Shane on the other. So Nia sat on the table between the two. MVP then asked Nia if she has the skills to make it to the top and win the Money in the Bank match. Asuka's like, have you paid attention to I've destroyed anyone who's put in, been put in front of me? Asuka, been back for like two weeks. Calm the fuck down. Asuka has asked about her response and... Asuka yells in Japanese about what Nia did to Kari Sane. She calls her a big bully. Then he asks the same question to Shayna. And Shayna's just like, I let all my actions do the talking for me. Shayna and Asuka have a stare down at each other. And then they kick Nia off the table. MVP tries to separate them. He tells them to save it for the fight. Got to say, entertaining... Nia Jax got kicked in the face and fell off a table and out of the ring. MVP was charming as always. It was a it was an alright segment. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. We then go to our first match of the evening. The Money in the Bank uh, ladder match qualifying gauntlet match. That was a hard to say. We start with Bobby Lashley versus Titus O'Neil. Spear for the three count. Titus is eliminated. Kyotazawa comes out. Spear eliminated. Lashley goes through. Bobby Lashley goes against Shelton Benjamin in the next. Uh, have a little bit more of a back and forth match. But again, Spear, three count. Then Huberto comes out. Um, Lashley is punching uh, Huberto in the corner. Lashley pushes the referee and the referee warns him about being disqualified. Then he gets disqualified for continuing to do it up. And then Lashley hits a spear on Huberto before he leaves the ringside area. Then Angel Garza versus Huberto. A little bit of a back and forth match. Uh, leading to Angel Garza getting eliminated with a sunset flip for the three count. Then Austin Theory comes out and he gets eliminated with an inside cradle. Then the t return of the century. Mind you, the century has just begun. AJ Styles returns to Monday Night Raw to crush Huberto's dream of ever being in the Money in the Bank ladder match with a calf crusher making him tap out. Overall, I'm just going to give the whole thing a 3.25 out of 5. Gauntlet matches are quite entertaining. Bobby looked, looked good in it. Huberto looked good. AJ came in one thing. Very, very nice. Um, then after the match, AJ... Uh, wraps um, Huberto's leg around the ring post, cuts a promo saying he's not a zombie or a ghost, there's no Undertaker trying to steal the spotlight. He got buried, literally. So what, I admit it and I understand, it doesn't mean that it's a loss. There's no rules in a Boneyard match. That was then, this is now. I've seized an opportunity in the most unique Money in the Bank ladder match. It's worth it. I'm going to do anything to get that contract. If that means throwing my Mysterio Alistair Black off the top of the WWE headquarters, so be it. There have not been what I they have not been through what I've been through. Get ready to rewrite the history book in the most memorable moment in the Money in the Bank ladder match. AJ Styles will win it and become Miss, Mr. Money in the Bank, and it will be phenomenal. I'm going to give it a seven out of ten. AJ cuts a damn good promo. Then, for some reason, Seth Rollins makes his way to the ring with Charlie for an interview and he talks about all the random crap he keeps talking about, the greater good and 
trying to unburden Seth Rollins from this championship and I'm trying to save Drew McIntyre. My destiny will become a reality when I stand in this ring with my head held high and the new champion and shut the fuck up, Seth Rollins. You honestly sound like the worst priest in the world. Not knocking on religion, but Jesus Christ, man. Jesus, man. This just goes on and on with the same repetitive bullshit. Can I give it a 1 out of 10? God, Seth is boring now. Absolutely ridiculously boring, and he's not even fun to watch anymore. Fuck off, Seth. Then we go to Shade Thorne and Brendan Think, and the black MVP uh, says, Great moments are born from great opportunities. Uh, they're the finest... Of Australian wrestlers, they have an opportunity like this. That's the, a miracle. Um, then we have Buddy Murphy. Oh, that's a throwaway segment. We're not going to rate it. And Buddy Murphy is asked about his loyalty to Seth Rollins. He said, "He's took me under his wing. That some someday I will learn and develop and be on the same level as him, or even better." We know this day is going to come, but we'll focus on tonight and Drew McIntyre. Seth thinks I can beat Drew, and I know I can. I know that I can beat Drew. Eh, 4 out of 10. Then we go to Cedric Alexander and Ricochet versus Brendan Vink and Shane Thorne. Vink with a running boot for the three count. They picked up a victory against Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. Very, very nice. Uh, Going to give the match a 2.75 out of 5. It wasn't amazingly spectacular, but good win for the rookies. In this instance, anyway. Uh, we saw Money in the Bank classic mo moments throughout the night. Didn't really mention it, but very nice. Then the Street Profits come out and have something to say. 1 out of 10. Moving swiftly on to the match. The Street Profits versus Eric and Ivar. And for some reason, this... Uh, oh, apparently it was a non-title match, according to this. I thought it was a title match. Okay. Either way, Ivar with the Viking experience with Eric, and they get three camp. They win. Match is going to get a 1.5 out of 5. Match is absolutely terrible, in my opinion. But they won. Thank God. Uh, then... Drew McIntyre is asked about both Murphy's comments and how he can beat him. Drew says he must have kicked Murphy harder than he thought. Does he ever know what his name is? Seth has taken advantage of Murphy, and if Murphy is willing to sacrifice himself for the Messiah, the Messiah is willing to sacrifice his disciples, who is he to stop the slaughter? 6 out of 10. Drew McIntyre cuts a good, damn good promo. More money in the bank moments, and then Charlie's with Eric and Ivar. Eric says, it's not success, this is dominance. We have a lot of respect for the Street Profits, but they're a better team. They will extinguish the smoke. Yes, please, 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 please destroy the freaking smoke. Thank, please, please, thank you. Uh, then Alistair Black asked AJ how did it feel? How did it feel to be buried six feet deep, all alone in that darkness, being swallowed by the darkness? What it didn't do was make you more humble. Now you're talking about throwing me off a building on Sunday. If you find your way to throw men off that building, pray that I don't get back up because I, cl I climb that ladder and I will take that money in the bank contract. When this happens, you'll wish that you were buried deeper than just six feet. 8 out of 10. Please do a program with that AJ Styles and Alistair Black. That would be amazing. Rey Mysterio talks about being there for a long time and uh, the risk is worth the reward for money in the bank. 6 out of 10. There's no more really to say about that. Then the NXT Women's Champion Charlotte Flair makes her way to the ring. Talking about Arya Shirai saying that wrestling Charlotte will be her dream opponent. She says she's happy to make that dream come true and she can bow down to the Queen. Liv Morgan comes out and interrupts. Says, remember me? Charlotte says she thinks Liv wants attention and Liv wants her her to take her seriously. Liv said she wasn't born with a silver spoon in her mouth. She didn't have daddy to walk her to school in the front line of her career for her choice. She said that she would be champion and take down a few backstabbers or a queen. 
Charlotte says Liv doesn't know who she is and Charlotte knows who she is. She says she's Ric Flair's daughter. She has to say, had a silver spoon in her mouth. She expected Liv would say she was her dream opponent. 3 out of 10. Please shut up, Flair. Then they have a match. Charlotte Flair wins with figure 8. 1.25 out of 5. Let me go to Jer. Sorry, I'm just... Oh, we saw too much Charlotte tonight. Then we go to McIntyre and Buddy Murphy in a non-title match. Drew with the clay... Oh, Buddy Murphy set up for his version of the Claymore. And then Drew gets Claymore and back for his own troubles. Now they're going to give the match a 2.5 out of 5. Fairly average. Good win for Drew McIntyre. Seth gets on the apron. Drew's like, attack me, fight me. Ah! Uh, Drew turns... Uh, back in, uh, sorry, Seth's like, nah, fuck that. Drew turns around to the camera, then he turns around back again to a super kick on Seth. Seth then sets up for the blackout, but Drew stops him and hits him with a Glasgow kiss. Sets up for a claim once he gets out of the ring in time. And that is Monday Night Raw. Overall, it was a good show. We had a good go on the match, some good talking segments. A bit too much um, Street Profits and Charlotte Flair for my liking, but oh well, overall it was a good show. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Now, we've got one more show until the most unique Money in the Bank match ever. I cannot wait for it. But yeah, thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, share and subscribe, and I shall catch you all later. Bye.